So last week, I released a new short film, about half of which was shot using this camera. For me, fall always has like kind of a vintagey, nostalgic vibe to it. So I wanted the video that I made about that season to represent that feeling. And I felt Super 8 really kind of had that vintage, nostalgic feeling more than anything else. So today I basically just wanna walk you through what I did to shoot a video on eight millimeter film and kind of some of the things I learned and some things that surprised me most about the process. And I wanna make it abundantly clear that this is not a tutorial. I am interested at some point down the line once I've used this a few more times in making like a comprehensive how to shoot on Super 8 film video, but that is not what this is. I definitely don't understand this enough to show you how to do it. So before you go and comment if you're a Super 8 or a film expert about how many things I did wrong, I know, that's, that's the point of the video. So the things I say in this video are not advice, merely observations about the process and some things that surprised me. The first of which is probably the cost of shooting on Super 8 film. Now, Although it looks cool in the video, unfortunately, I didn't just find this while rummaging around my attic. I paid a good chunk of change for all of this stuff on eBay. The camera was like about $250, and then I had to order it from Japan on eBay, so the shipping was another like 100 or so dollars. Then uh, getting these rolls of film, I got four, and they're about like, I don't know, like $40 each, so that's another about $160. And then to get the two rolls of film that I used, developed and digitized, was another about $140, $150. So it came out to a total of about $670 to shoot using this camera. Now, as much fun as it's been to shoot on this camera, I think looking back, I probably should have gone with a smaller, lighter weight option. I mean, as great as this particular film camera is, it's pretty big, pretty heavy, pretty bulky, and kind of tough to lug around in my camera bag. And when the point of shooting on Super 8 is kind of to capture like those nostalgic, like authentic little funny moments, it just doesn't make sense to be lugging around something so massive and inconvenient to do that. But that being said, now that we've shelled out some cash to get all the necessary tools, let's go get these set up. The hair is just, it's too long. It was gonna have to happen at some point. As someone who's only ever really used digital cameras, I found the setup process for shooting on 8mm film stressful. Just so many tiny little details to get right and no way to obviously like preview the result before you actually pull the trigger. I'm honestly just like pleasantly surprised that I even have footage to work with from this camera. Throughout the entire process, I just kept worrying and kept repeating that I was probably gonna screw up some detail and end up with footage that was just, you know, seven minutes of white screen. And that's a very real risk. I mean, there are so many tiny little details to get right here and just messing up one of them a little bit could completely ruin all of your footage. So when you're trying this out for the first time, although it seems very fun and simple on the surface, I cannot stress enough the importance of being so meticulous with every little detail, double, triple, quadruple, octuple check every single move you make because the stakes are pretty high and you won't know if you got it right until you get it back from the lab. All that being said, I think we've got everything right. So let's go out for a bit and talk about what it was like to actually shoot with this camera in the field. There's one lesson that I definitely learned the hard way the first time I went out to shoot, and that's that three and a half minutes of film is not quite as long as it seems. I regret to admit that the first time I went out to shoot with this, went out to shoot a sunrise, I got a little trigger happy. I got a little carried away and I burned an entire roll of film, three and a half minutes of film on this one shoot. Just, oh, that's a nice shot get that. That's also a nice shot. Zoom in, get that, zoom out. And obviously I knew that before I went into it. Like I knew there's a very limited 
amount of time, but I think I had to kind of learn that lesson the hard way to kind of internalize it in my brain that I really needed to be careful with what I was choosing to shoot. So be very sparing with what you choose to shoot. Make sure before you hold down this trigger that it's definitely something you're gonna be glad to look back on in a couple months. I know this might kind of sound like it contradicts the last point before this, but I think it's important that you don't try too hard to get like perfect cinematic shots because with Super 8 footage, that's just not the point. I mean, the most satisfying footage to look back at when you get it back from the lab is going to be those genuine, you know, maybe funny, silly, or just authentic, memorable, kind of in-between moments. It's not gonna be like the most perfectly composed, beautifully lit shot of a tree. You're not gonna care about that tree two months down the line when you get this footage back. So don't try too hard to get those perfectly composed, beautiful, cinematic shots when you're shooting on Super 8. Save that for your fancy digital camera and try and capture those authentic moments with this because that's what it's ultimately about is getting those authentic memories to look back on when you get this stuff back from the lab. All that being said, it's a little wet. I don't want to break this guy, so we're going to head on out. All right. So now you've got everything set up correctly. Hopefully gone out, shot some footage, hopefully not too much. And now you're all ready to send this film off to be developed. Remember how I said when you're setting up the camera and the film and everything, you need to be super meticulous and get all these small details right? Yeah, the, uh, the shipment process is exactly the same. Assuming you don't have somewhere nearby that you can just drive to to have your film developed and digitized, you'll have to mail it off. And basically you just package the rolls of film that you shot along with a hard drive for the digitized footage to be sent back on. And depending on where you're getting your film developed, you might also have to send in a physical order form with a bunch of little details about your payment and your return address and how you'd like the film developed. And there are a lot of little details to get right here. This process took me quite a while, mostly because my handwriting is not the most legible out there. So I was very paranoid that I was gonna, you know, write a one too close to a seven and then get the return address wrong and just never see my precious film again. But there were also just like a lot of new terms that I had never heard before, like overscan and best light and all these other different settings that you have to tell them to specify to make sure that your film is developed a certain way. Best light is basically the film equivalent of log. So they'll scan it in such a way that it preserves a lot of detail. So you'll probably want to do that. Also making sure that the film is overscanned in my case, that makes sure that you get the entire frame, including you know the edge of the film and the sprocket on the left side, rather than just having the picture with you know straight edges on the borders. You can also specify like the resolution and the video format of the digital file they send back to you and all these other little specifications to make sure that your footage comes back as detailed and as good as possible. If you're shipping internationally, you're also gonna wanna make sure that you write do not x-ray on the film. That way, if it goes through customs, they'll make sure not to x-ray it, which can damage the film. And those are just a few kind of examples of new terminology that stood out to me. Just be super meticulous, do a ton of research, and make sure that you choose all of the right options when you're sending this off to be developed. But once you've gone through that entire process, tackled the learning curve of doing this for the first time, a couple weeks, or in my case, like three months will go by. And one day you'll finally get this film back in the mail and it'll all be worth it. Most places will send you obviously the hard drive you sent them and this will have the digitized file on it. And they also send you a pizza, which is pretty neat. Nah, they send you like this, this little box that has the developed film in it. So I guess you could put this in like a projector and watch it even more hipstery, even more vibey and authentically. I'm not gonna do that though, cause baby steps. But you can crack this open, take a look at it and enjoy the beautiful colors, the nostalgic vintagey vibes, the grain, and just the satisfaction of having waited so long to see this footage. It's the best. Honestly, can't wait to take this camera on like an actual like week or two long trip down the road and just capture some sick, nostalgic footage. All that being said, you should now have all of the information you need to now go out and shoot your own video on Super 8 film. 
Just kidding. You, If this is the first video you've watched on 8mm film, your toe is like not even in the pool yet. So you got, you got a lot of work to do, but it'll be worth it. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative or engaging in some way. If you did, feel free to share your support, leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel and following me on Instagram. I've been posting more than ever on there lately. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one. It's loud too. I uh, should have put that in the should have put that in the video.